Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about a relatively affordable thermal imaging device, the FLIR Scout TK. So I've been using it now for a couple months, just playing with it here and there, um, getting some video footage when I remember to, so I could give you guys a little review and show you what it's like, what it does, how it performs, um, and hopefully answer some questions that you might have had about it. So here, we'll just show it. All right guys, so here it is, um, and there's not much to it, so it'll be pretty quick. The reason I like this is because it's just an all, all-in-one unit, all-inclusive unit. It's not a little dongle you have to attach to your cell phone or whatever. So I have this upstairs, so if I hear something outside, I just grab it and run outside and see, what, see what's out there. Um, and that's kind of nice because I don't have to worry about firing up an app, plugging it into my phone, having my phone, having the thing, doing all that stuff. So there's some advantages to those dongle kind, um, and then there's some advantages to some all-in-one units like this one. This is not weapon mountable or any kind of mountable. I've seen some hacks online where people can hook them up to different kinds of mounts. I haven't tried any of that yet, so I can't speak to it myself. Uh, this material is kind of a rubbery material, the green stuff, and then the black is just kind of a hard plastic. Um, yeah, there's not much to it. So here's a little charge port. Uh, just use micro USB so you can charge it from a little battery pack or a solar panel or what have you. Um, power button, which is also the menu button when it's on. This button, which lets you get to the brightness settings. This, which will allow you to take a picture or video. And then this, which will allow you to cycle through the various modes that I'll show here in a second. Um, has a little rubber, rubber cap. Doesn't really work well with glasses. It kind of does though. I'd recommend taking them off if you don't have good vision. There's a little diopter adjustment type thing here. Um, and you are, when you're looking through this, you're actually looking through, looking into like a little LCD screen in here. Um, and then you just have this little cap that covers the front guy. So turning it on and I'll see, let's see if we can, we can zoom in here. Um, here we go. So it takes about five seconds to boot up or so, and then it's on. So yeah. Once it's on, then you can get to the menus, like I said, adjust all that stuff, take pictures or videos, uh, does not record sound, and has a little LED here that shows when it's on. And yeah, looking through it is kind of just like looking through a 1X optic, aim point, MRO, that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't have a very wide field of view, and I don't. it doesn't really feel like it's magnified, though it's certainly not wide angle. It's not like looking through... Uh, a wide angle land, lens on a camera or your cell phone. So your field of view is pretty limited, but that lets you kind of look out kind of further. So it says it it's, uh, works out to 100 yards and more. And I found that to be true, though the resolution's pretty low to where you're not gonna get that much useful stuff past 100 yards. Though you can see, you know, if it's a large thing, you can see uh, its heat signature. Um, and I think it's just a great little device. So it's kind of like a force multiplier. Is, is it needed? No, but will it give you an edge uh, for reconnaissance type stuff? Yeah, definitely. Will it let you see heat signatures out in the yard? Yeah, for sure. Um, but it can't be, it's not weapon mountable. And uh, like I think I mentioned, maybe I didn't mention it yet. Uh, there, I've seen some posts online that people have jerry-rigged this to like helmet mounts and stuff like that, but I haven't done that, so I can't speak to it yet. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna go over some video now, just so video that I recorded on the device so you can kind of see what it's like looking through it. And then for size reference, here is a Glock 17 mag. And yeah. So here we're just gonna show some random footage so you can see what it's like basically. Here we're just out shooting, looks like a 1911 and some steel targets. Um, the one target looks like it's been warming up in the sun a little bit because you can see it and the other two are kind of hidden. Um, so it's really, when you're looking through this thing, uh, you'll notice that the refresh rate, the hertz, aren't that great. So what kind of separates a lower end device and a higher end device, so thermals go up, you know, 20, 30, 40, $100,000, you can get thermal imaging devices. Um, and they're relatively similar except that you know, durability obviously might be different or um, the refresh rate. So this only has around nine hertz, which means 
there are nine frames per second. When you look at a TV or a computer monitor, it's you know around 60 hertz, unless you have a gaming monitor like I do, which is like 200 hertz, but um, nine hertz is slow. So it's not that good at tracking. Here you see me going through the different color modes. So there's a handful of them. Most of this you'll see is on uh, black and white in uh, white hot. Um, anyway, back to the hertz. So hertz, higher hertz obviously allows you to track movement better. Um, and then higher uh, resolution obviously makes the image more clear. Here you see the, <laughs> the leftover, the residual heat signature of my dog that was laying on the couch. Uh, I think we come back to it here in a second. But yeah, here I'm just kind of cycling through the modes, letting you see the dog's heat signature. They're out on the deck right now. Here is where the dog was laying down on the couch. So it stays like that for a while, even after the dog is gone. So if you're wondering where they've been laying or if the dog was on the couch and the jumped off right when you got home, you could bust out your thermal and see if you wanted to um, and track that kind of stuff. So now she's getting back onto her nice, warm, comfortable spot, I guess. So here you can also, you know, practical, practical uses, you can use it to see where you may be losing energy in the house. This is my doggy door, so you can see that it's black. Um, so I'm probably losing some heat through there, and maybe I should insulate it a little better in the winter. Here you just see heat signatures of various stuff. There's a little uh, power brick on the ground there. This is the computer case, so the back of it exhausting hot air, um, and the heat on the monitor there. This is a MacBook. You can see the heat is in the center of the keyboard. Uh, this is a sink faucet I just thought was cool. So that was cold water was black and now it's hot water is white. Um, so I'm just switching between hot and cold so you can see the difference and it's kind of cool watching it mix around there in the sink for no other reason than I thought it looked cool. Um, other practical uses are you can use it to view cars. So in the big image here is my truck when it hasn't been driven. It's just been sitting for a while. The picture in picture image is after I drove it to the store. So you can see the tires heated up, the wheels heated up, the brakes heated up, some certain components of the engine that you can see through the grill heated up. If it had been running longer, probably the whole hood would be heated up, but this was just a pretty short trip. Um, so if you're wondering if a car has been driven recently, it's pretty easy, especially around, you know, the exhaust tip here is obviously gonna be hotter. Um, the wheels, brakes, that kind of stuff's gonna be hotter. So here is just kind of showing the distance. So these are cars out on a freeway, um, way more than 100 yards, you can see their heat signature. So if it's a big device, if it's putting off a lot of heat, you can you can see it for a ways off, much more than the uh, kind of 100 yards that were stated. Um, just kind of flipping through some modes here. And yeah, I don't know, it's a, it's a fun little device here. Obviously, it'd be cool if you could hear some sound so it doesn't look my, like my wife is just a crazy person dancing to nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I kind of mentioned earlier, it's just a, it's a force multiplier. You can use it in reconnaissance. You can see things that you couldn't see uh, with your naked eye. Uh, now, thermal works during the daytime and at night. A lot of these images are actually during the day. Um, that freeway image during the day, uh, and a lot of other, a lot of other these, these little clips are during the day. It works much better at night because this is this is at night. This is about 15 yards, and I was just kind of curious here if I put on a down jacket, like a pretty heavy duty down jacket, if it would hide my thermal signature at all and it doesn't really. So I back up here to the fence, you can see the fence is about 60 to 75 yards. So you can see you'll be able to have thermal vision quite a bit further than that even. Um, but it works much better at night. This is at night. During the day, you'll have uh, areas that are heated up by the sun. Um, and as it moves through shadows, through trees, through stuff like that, it heats up different areas. So using it during the day, you know, you don't really need to probably, there's my dog peeing, um, as much as you would at night. Um, during the day just doesn't really work as well as at night because at night everything is more of an even temperature um, So you don't have this variance caused by uh, the direct sunlight here. I take off my jacket to see How much more heat signature I have just wearing a t-shirt obviously the t-shirt is probably a little warmer because it was in my jacket so here a normal body with a t-shirt I think it was around 45 degrees out is just glaringly white out to, you know, 75 yards. Um, zipping my jacket back up. 
And then I think I'm gonna run through the, and it's dark here, so the, the picture in picture that you're seeing, this little black spot is just a, what it was looked like from a cell phone. You really couldn't see anything from the cell phone video. You could see a little more with the human eye, um, but you couldn't really see out there. Yeah, if you got a flashlight out or something, you could, but th that's one of the advantages of, of thermal or night vision is just it require well, thermal requires no light at all. Night vision still requires a light source, whether it be moonlight or an IR light, but thermal can work in just absolute darkness. So here, and mind you, it's pretty dark, so I don't want to trip over anything. So if I'm running like a goon, it's because I'm kind of trying to high step over things and make sure I don't trip on anything. But I just want to see how easy it was for her to track me. Um, this is my wife filming through the woods when it was virtually pitch black, and she was able to do it no problem. Uh, and my dogs were able to do it no problem too. So yeah, that's basically it. Thanks again to Optics Planet for sending this guy out. Uh, if you're interested, click the link, links below always. Um, and I didn't talk much about comparing it to night vision because it's really its own beast. But quickly between night vision and thermal, uh, night vision is better in some ways because it helps you identify your threat. You can actually see things a little more clearly versus just kind of seeing their thermal signature. So this is kind of, they both have their pros and cons to them. Um, but we're just covering thermal right now. Maybe in the future, I'll compare night vision and thermal. If you'd like a video on that, let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, as far as an affordable thermal device, this is a pretty sweet little guy. So if you're interested, if you're in the market or even if you're not in the market, but you just are looking for a new gadget to get, um, I would check this guy out. All right, thank you for watching and liking and subscribing and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions about this device, if it can see that or this or whatnot, uh, ask me below in the comments and I will try to either test it myself or give you some educated guess about it. All right, take care.